Husband fuming after note from wife's boss. He saw red when he read that note. For weeks, that nagging feeling had kept him up at night and made his days pure hell, filling him with anxiety and distress. But now, he finally knew the truth for certain. After reflecting for a few minutes, there was only one thing on his mind, and it wasn't sorrow or grief, it was revenge. Until then, Callum and Mandy seemed like the perfect couple to anyone who knew them. They had been together since their last year of high school. They remained together for the entirety of their college years and married shortly after finishing their degrees. Now, Callum was about to finish his Ph.D. in classics, and Mandy had recently started working as a registered nurse. They were excited to start new stages in their careers and save some money to move out of the tiny flat where they lived. Little did they know that the biggest challenges were right around the corner. For many couples who start off as high school sweethearts, it's often challenging to stay together during their years in university. They can grow apart, become overwhelmed by the pressure of their studies, or learn more about their true likings and preferences as they're exposed to more people their age. However, this hadn't been the case with Callum and Mandy. Or at least, that's what Callum thought. Callum had seen many of his friends breaking up with their high school girlfriends after starting college just to concatenate several volatile and short-lived relationships during their student years. Secretly, he prided himself on not being like that and staying with the same girl since he was 17. Not many people knew about his actual reasons for that, and Callum never opened up about it to anyone. Callum valued family above everything else, and this was because he never had the chance to have one growing up. His mom, Angela, had raised him by herself. Callum's dad abandoned them months before his son was born. The man was a well-known womanizer who used to juggle with different lovers at any given time. He promised Angela that now that he was about to have a kid, he'd finally step up and clean up his act. But he lied. And that wasn't all. Now, after years of reflecting on his childhood and going to therapy, Callum knew the devastating and irreversible effects that growing up without a father had on his psyche. He had some serious trust issues, and it was hard for him to be emotionally vulnerable. He also had some codependent tendencies, which could sometimes make him possessive. All of that was his subconscious working, trying by all means to prevent the trauma of being abandoned again. Now, at 26 years of age, he knew for sure that he wanted to have a family and be a good father. After all those years with Mandy, he thought he had been enormously lucky to find the right woman for it. As soon as both of them started making some decent income, they could get a bigger house and try to have children. Or that's what he thought. After finishing his PhD, Callum found out that there weren't many chances out there for him. There was a lot of competition for every researcher and professor position in every university. After spending his years subsisting on a rather measly scholarship, he found himself unemployed and with no way to support himself. Fortunately, Mandy had just started working. But that came with a catch. In that area, there was a lot of work for registered nurses. That meant that Mandy could get paid plenty, but at the cost of spending long hours in the hospital. She often did evening and night shifts, one after the other, and she'd rarely have days off. Mandy was glad to keep up with all that workload while Callum searched for a university position in his field. However, it didn't take long before Callum started feeling like there was something fishy. Mandy often seemed too happy about her long shifts in the hospital. At first, Callum thought she was just excited about starting work and contributing to something positive with her job while helping make ends meet at home. But it was almost like it was more pleasure than work for her. Even when she had the chance to take a weekend off, Mandy refused to do so and headed to the hospital in the middle of the night, all dolled up and with a smile on her face. And that wasn't all. After months of searching for a professor or researcher position without success, Callum suggested that he may take any other job. Deep inside, he felt ashamed of himself for living like a bum on his wife's salary. He wondered how long it would take for Mandy to start feeling ashamed of him too. But Mandy told him that it wasn't necessary. She said she was more than happy to work hard and be the breadwinner for the time being until Callum found a way to pursue his dream career. That was when Callum started feeling suspicious. 
Could his wife be having an affair with a staff member from her hospital? He had often heard stories about everything that usually went down in hospitals. One of his friends was a young surgeon who used to brag about how all the nurses were always on him. At first, he didn't want to believe it. He remembered everything he had talked about with his therapist, his trust issues, and whatnot. But one day, something happened that made his stomach drop to his knees. One morning, while Mandy was at work, Callum woke up, made himself breakfast, and went to the mailbox. There was a letter from someone he didn't know. As he started reading it, he started fuming. The letter opened with something he would have never expected to read, thank you for sharing your wife. What the heck was that about? Thank you for sharing your wife, as she has been mandated to work several times over the last few months. We certainly recognize that it took her away from her family. Please know we appreciate her, and thank you for sharing her when we desperately needed her. Sincerely, Upstate Office of Patient Experience. After reading that note, Callum didn't know what to think. Was that some sort of joke? Why were they thanking him for sharing his wife and not her for putting up with the insane workloads? The wording on the letter was absolutely cringe-inducing for Callum, and even sort of sleazy. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. What did that even mean? Why was his wife enduring that sort of treatment? Callum sat down to reflect and patiently waited for Mandy to come back home. Now, he was sure of something. The situation couldn't go on like that. They had a lot to talk about. 